What's the worst thing you have ever seen someone you thought you respected do? My aunt, which was a really nice person was living with my 96 year old grandfather. She used to show up with brand new things, like a Mini Cooper, expensive fur and shoes. Nobody said anything because she was taking care of the old man. Well, one day my mom went to his house, only to find a mess all over the apartment, and my grandfather sitting on a chair with poop everywhere. It was clear it has been a while since she checked if he was clean, or since she took him to the toilet. When she proceeded to clean him, he said he did not remember the last time he had taken a shower, and that it felt good to feel the water on his body. Can you believe this crap? That was awful, but the worst came when the grandpa fell, went into a coma. That was the perfect time for the aunt to go on a trip with friends to the beach. Grandpa died the day after. He would have been dying by himself if my father didn't leave his work and got into a plane to see him for the last time. Since that day, that woman doesn't mean anything anymore to me. She spent all his money on expensive crap and left him alone when his time had come. I hope she dies alone. When I was 12 or so, we were visiting my cousins down in Fresno. We were there for 4 days. About 3am on the last night, I was awoken by my brother screaming, Sister is missing after about 15 minutes of listening to my mother crying. The cops arrived. Eventually, I found out that my uncle, who was in the Air Force, tried to rape her. When she refused, he told her to get the frick out of the house, and she ran away. I lost all respect for my uncle who I previously looked up to, and gained some respect for my sister, who was strong enough to refuse. I was at an AA meeting the other day and the speaker spent almost the entire hour talking about how his life has completely changed and how much of a better person he is. 15 minutes after the meeting I saw him smash another car while pulling out and then he just drove away. Dong. Well at least you can tell the police his full name and. Oh. My friends decided to tape me to a bed while I was asleep. They took almost an entire roll and they went underneath the bed and everything and I couldn't get out cause they also taped me down by my head and feet. They made me eat a cup of wet and dry dog food before they would untie me. Not even gonna lie I cried the entire time. I really hope you ditched those creepy suckers. No one does this, not even to an enemy, let alone a friend. My dad remarried when I was 3. My stepmother was physically, emotionally, and verbally abusive. My grandparents and biological mother had scoured the area for good while to get me the Dong Tracy and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle action figures. I'm talking like, the hard to find ones, Shredder, Krang, the Technodrome, and then the Dong Tracy ones, Sam Catchem, Lips Manilis, Flatup, you get the idea. My stepmother threw them all away one weekend when I was at my mother's. She said she did it because we didn't need their handouts. In the scope of things, they are just action figures. But man, how you gonna do that to a 5 year old? In the scope of things that be did you way 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 wrong. My mother isn't at all computer savvy, and wanted me to help her email her brother in Korea pictures of her vacation to the beach. I later found out that it wasn't her brother she was emailing, but the man she was cheating on my dad with at the time. I can't believe she got you involved. I'm sorry to hear that story. I had an amazing professor in college. Someone whose career path I wanted to emulate. Someone who told me I'd be very good in his field. I took all of his classes, earned honors grades, made huge efforts to be participatory, even went on semester break travel for credit trips with him. At the close of my senior year, I scheduled a meeting with him to find out what academic steps I would need to take in order to have a career like his. At the meeting he came on to me, I rebuffed him, and he told me I was neither smart nor dedicated enough to ever make it in his field and that I should stop wasting his time. Not only did I lose all of the respect I had for him as an educator, I lost so much confidence in myself that I never wound up pursuing those goals. I had a similar experience with my prof mentor, except he fricked my girlfriend of 3 years, made it kind of hard to finish college, they're married and she's miserable because he's old as crap and she cheats on him, I have an awesome wife and life, frick, yep. When I was about 15 years old, my friends and I planned on seeing the new Harry Potter movie the day it came out. My best friend at the time was collecting money so he could buy tickets for everyone. So I obliged and gave him money for a ticket. Later that night, 
My parents took me to the theater, and I was excited to see the movie with my friends. When I got there, I called my friend to see where he was, but he didn't answer. After about 5 calls, he picked up to inform me that he gave my ticket to someone else and then hung up. Confused. I kept calling back until someone else picked up his phone and started mocking me. Since the show was sold out, I had to call my parents back to take me home. How could anyone, especially my best friends, be so cruel? I've never been a victim of this myself, but saw it happen far too much when I was younger, and to a lesser extent, as an adult. It's embarrassing to watch a group of your friends, in their late 20s too, randomly decide they dislike someone and making them the runt. Congrats, they are outnumbered, and I don't want to hang out with you guys anymore. Growing up, one of my childhood best friends had a pet rabbit that she adored and lavished attention on. Our families used to spend a lot of time hanging out at each other's cottages at various times in the summer and winter, and being a huge animal lover. That rabbit was always a fixture of those get togethers for me. It was playful, well behaved and obviously loved and trusted my friend. Flash forward to when I was in my late teens, and I hear some news from my parents about my friend and her rabbit. By this point, she'd had the rabbit for about 8 or 9 years, but it was still in perfect health. However, one day, she apparently announced to her parents that she had decided that she didn't want to take care of her rabbit anymore, but she also didn't want to give it away to anyone else, so she had decided to kill it. After unsuccessful attempts on the part of her parents to either change her mind about keeping the rabbit, giving it away or at least taking it to the vet to be put to sleep humanely, she refused to change her mind. So, she took her rabbit out to the shed in their yard, started up her car, Piped the car exhaust into the shed and stood stone faced looking in through the window while the pet she'd grown up with struggled, suffered and slowly died. Needless to say, I lost pretty much all respect for my friend upon hearing that, and for her parents too, for allowing her to go through with that disgusting plan. Sounds like some sort of mental illness raising its ugly head. My older siblings. I respected them throughout my life until my elderly mother got Alzheimer's and other terminal health problems. I was the only one willing to step to the plate to take care of her. The others just made excuses why they couldn't do it. The pressure of taking care of her, she came to live with my family, almost killed me. I couldn't have done it without support of my wife, who also bore a large brunt of the responsibility, which I felt guilty about because it wasn't her mother. Then when my mom died my siblings could only think in terms of themselves and what the death meant to them. They could only think in terms of their loss. In other words, no longer having a mother, they never realized that my mother was the one who truly needed comfort and care before she died. Obviously, not them. In other words, they felt pain for my mom's death, but selfish pain, not empathetic pain for what my mom went through. I lost all respect for them. I still keep in touch with them but I think they are full of crap. After my little brother, who was once my best friend, stole and pawned my MacBook with all of my music, pictures, and college papers, stole my entire DVD collection, stole my prescription pain medications that I needed for actual pain management, and attempted to steal my 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 I held him while he cried and screamed and swore, and cried and screamed with him. He used the next morning. That's when I finally lost my respect for him, more for my own sanity and well-being. Freaking H. I have two elderly aunts, we'll call them A and B, who are like grandmothers to my siblings and I, and they went well above and beyond what is necessary for someone. They both lived together and they never married, nor had children. All in all, they are utterly amazing people. Well, one of the two aunts, A, passed away a few years ago and had a little bit of money in savings when she passed. These two aunts come from a very large family, and they have a number of other brothers and sisters. My other aunt, B, is on disability, and lives with a very strict limited budget, yet regardless she tries to do whatever she can to help people. Well, B's other siblings aren't as kind as her, they are all filthy rich, and we're talking millionaire types. These siblings demanded, utterly demanded, that the money my aunt left went to them for some stupid reason. They harassed my poor aunt day and night for the money until my aunt finally relented. To this day, I will not speak nor interact with those siblings of my aunt. 
I don't consider them family and I hope they all burn in heck. How can one justify when you're filthy stinking rich to take money from someone with a limited income such as that? It just boggles my mind. This is why you make a will, no matter how little you think you have, and make sure the beneficiary is your beloved sister, not the other vampires to whom you're related. I am very glad that your aunt is happy now and that she's got them off of her back. Mum mum stole $2000 from me, all I had saved myself for college, didn't own up to it, dated my ex stepdad in secret for 6 months without thinking my brother or I would find out, and last thanksgiving she left my grandma's house to go stay at her friends because her sisters decided to confront her about her drinking problem and she didn't want to uh, 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 to to uh, to I thought this teacher I work with was like me. I thought he cared about the kids and wanted them to excel. But the truth is that he judges them based on their appearance and makes fun of them. Constantly. The first time he did it in front of me. I told him how classless I thought it was. I have no respect for him at all. You hear the worst things about students in teachers lounges. I generally eat by myself in my library. When Metallica came to town my friend knew I was a huge fan and told me he scored two tickets from his boss at work and wanted to give me one. I was freaking out I was so happy. The day of the concert, I spoke to him and he told me to be ready at whatever time and he would pick me up. I sat on my front porch waiting for him and calling him for several hours. He finally picked up and said he was sick and was sorry. I said no worries. Hope you feel better. The next day a mutual friend posted pics of my friend and him at the concert. Having a blast. Feel Spudman JPG. When I was around 10 year my father took me and my little 5 year brother to a very unusual trip to the mall. I had no idea why he wanted to go but what I knew was that my mother had gone to the mall a few minutes before us. So we are riding on the expressway when I see her car and him like look dad there is mom. So we keep on following her up to the mall. She went in and we just waited on the car. At this time I was really confused because either we were going with her but no. Dad wanted to wait for her around her car. We keep on looking and there she comes. I can clearly remember her exiting with this other guy all suited up holding her bags. By then my father was already starting the car to take off. We got home before her and the rest is history. So yeah, I lost all my respect for her for that and other crap she has done. When I turned 20 I found out that my dad had had an illegitimate son right before he married my mother. He had a paternity test which came back positive. But he claims that it only means he could be the father and prove nothing. He said it was more likely his father, my granddad, was the father. The thing is brotherman, as he'll call him, looks more like my dad than I do. Now my dad won't take a more recent test to prove he isn't the father, he won't talk to or about brotherman. He won't even be in the same building as him. We recently had a death in the family and when brotherman showed up to pay respect, the rest of our family treats him as the cousin nephew grandson that he is. Dad left the funeral home. I would go more into detail but I have a feeling that in this huge thread no one will see this. I saw it. Amid all these heart wrenching stories, this story is the closest to mine. Plus, Brotherman is an awesome nickname and I'd genuinely like to hear more. My best friend and I went to hang out with a girl he was interested in. He ended up making fun of me and whatnot the whole day in front of her to impress her I guess. It feels bad. I hate it when people act differently with someone else than when they're around you. When my ex-wife and I got into a fight in my workroom she picked up a mid-pipe from a car exhaust and hit me in the side of my head twice, knocked me out. She is a first grade teacher who often has to give talks about conflict resolution and non-violent solutions to disagreements. I hope you filed a complaint with the police. People like this should not be allowed to teach to young children. When I was a church going kid, my youth pastor was a really cool guy that everyone liked and respected. He would always host pool parties and luau's at his house for his youths and their families, and was generally seen as a fun guy and a role model. One day, I heard him casually mention that his kids didn't want to take care of their dog anymore, so they took the dog away and left him by the road somewhere far enough from their house so he couldn't find his way back. The youth pastor very clearly did not see a problem with this and seemed to genuinely believe this was an acceptable thing to do. I never looked at him the same again, and I can't think back on that without wanting to punch him. My mom did this with my lab. 
He came back years later, just walked up to me in the driveway, she said it wasn't him. On Christmas a few years back, I found out my mom had been having an affair because my dad told me out of spite, his Christmas had been ruined, so why shouldn't mine? Apparently, I didn't really get anything for Christmas due to what I believed my family going through financial issues, but it turned out my mom had bought the daughter of her boyfriend all sorts of candies and treats, using the reasoning that her parents just divorced so she's So then I called the guy and told him to back the frick off of my family and to not do any more harm to my life because he had already ruined my Christmas and he was going to ruin my parents marriage too. I don't think I was very threatening though. I was a 14 year old girl and I was crying the whole time. But then he started sending me harassing messages on Facebook and started calling my dad and harassing him too. Once he called while I was home and I could hear him screaming through the phone, and he said he was going to drag my dad behind his truck down Broadway Street because that's what he did with the last guy who interfered with his relationships. So we called the cops and filed a restraining order against this guy, and told my mom that she was legally obligated to stop having anything to do with him. A few months later I found emails back and forth between them. Then my dad ruined our computer by trying to set up applications that would track and save anything my mom ever typed on it. So I'd say all three of those adults did the worst thing I've ever seen. And I respected two of them. My parents recently did something that I'm not sure I'll ever understand. My grandmother is 86 years old. Last year she went to the grocery store alone and slipped and fell in an aisle. She had a stroke and has never been able to go home since. When it was clear that she needed to be in a nursing home, they made her a ward of the state so that she wouldn't become their financial burden. This also means she was and is living in the grossest overcrowded nursing home in our town. For some people, this would be the only option. Nice nursing homes are expensive and unless a person has quite a bit of disposable income, it's usually the only thing you can do for your parents. This isn't the case for my parents. While they aren't millionaires, they do very well for themselves and two months after my grandmother had the stroke, they put a 150,000.00 addition onto their house. 150k would have bought grandma at least a few years in a decent place where she could have had her own room, maybe even a little apartment, but no, they stuck her in a place that smells like urine with a room the size of a closet that she has to share with another woman. My grandma has dementia, but she's not that far gone yet. Every time I see her I feel horrible that she left hen house for milk and bread and never got to see it again, that my parents could spend that kind of money on their already large house when it's just the two of them, and that I am too poor to do anything to help her. It really bothers me to see my parents in this light. I always thought they were very family oriented and needless to say, at least when it counts, they are not. I watched the woman I love slowly become oxycant and junkie, and yeah, I stayed with her and I tried to help her get clean and she did. She quit, and relapsed, and quit and relapsed etc. But if you've quit popping pills 3 times and now you're slamming it into your freaking arm, if you can't realize that you're nodding off while driving and I have to physically force you out of the driver's seat, if you lie to me about it, I'm done. I used to be really close with my cousin, go to parties together, hang out every weekend, talk about everything together, until we actually went to school together. I was not one of the popular people, so she acted like I didn't exist to not get embarrassed, heard her saying things like I wasn't a real cousin, I was adopted, etc. That wouldn't have been so bad if she hadn't talked crap about me to everybody else in the family. I'm not sure exactly what she has said but I lost contact with everyone else. When I do see them out of forced gatherings they talk to me as if I am mentally challenged and if I mention anything about school they act like I overcame obstacles. No longer see anyone because at the last gathering I punched out a male cousin who, in a very disgusting way, said X told me that you're gay. No wonder you can't get a girlfriend and no one in our family likes you. Needless to say respect was not the only thing that I lost. Screw your family. Start your own badass family and show up at the next reunion type gathering and rub it in their dang faces. Glad I have a throwaway. I have had a great friend for 5 years. Earlier this month, I got dumped by my girlfriend, and she was a bee about it. She's this friend's GF's best friend. My friend has been on her side, 
taunting me, and insulting me when I feel crappy about the relationship. Last night he had a threesome, gross, with his girlfriend and my ex. Texted me a picture of them making out then began bragging about sex. Yeah, friend. We never had an argument for 5 years, and, suddenly, B. Found out a girl I knew who was married with a new baby was planning to have an affair with a married man. To make matters worse, her husband was the nicest, kindest dude ever, always trying to give her everything she ever wanted. She thought he wasn't good enough for her because he had a very honorable blue collar job. Tried to talk her out of it then just tried to avoid her. Also, my mom's friend came with her to pick me up at the airport once. She kept making a bunch of racist comments, which I tried to ignore out of respect for my mother. I finally got sick of it, told her to sfoo and never talk like that around me or my kid again. I've never had to keep company with her again. Colon D. When I say planning, I really mean scheming. It was significantly more involved than just imagining. My wife's parents like me up and to the point I actually proposed. I even got permission. Guess they thought I meant in 20 years or something. Anyway, so I propose. My, then, girlfriend says yes. They rescind their blessing. Demand a budget of how I will provide. Use their own bad marriage as an example of why marriage sucks. Decide not to help with the wedding financially. Refuse to give the bride a right to the chapel. Even though they are going anyway. Insult me during a speech at the reception. Get drunk and belligerent. Hire a professional photographer and only bind 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 only This is just the wedding. My wife got pregnant three months later. They tell their other kids not to tell anybody. Advise that we abort the child we chose to have. Refuse to be called grandparents. And tell their daughter that having kids ruined their life. These people had their first child at 16. Out of wedlock. They are lecturing US. TL. DR. The people I had once liked and respected. As my wife's parents. Reveal themselves to be complete judgmental and ethical buttholes once I propose marriage. After I get their blessing. I used to work for an awesome company that would pay me to live in different US cities and remodel stores. I was always the youngest person on the travel crew, and more often than not, I was the only female as well. In 06, I was flown to Boston for work over the winter months. When I arrived at Logan Airport, my boss, a middle-aged man that I looked up to at the time, was there waiting for me. He was a really cool guy, super motivating, extremely charismatic, the boss all people wish they had. When he took me to the hotel I'd be living in for the next few months, I was surprised to see that I was given a suite on the top floor, but thought nothing of it. After unpacking, I realized that the only thing I had forgotten were my undergarments, and since it was late and I didn't have a way to get to the store, I had to ask my boss to drive me, which he gladly did. He said that he would walk around while I bought underwear etc, but at one point, I saw him watching me between the racks. Instead of being creeped out, I simply thought I was taking too much time in making my selection. I picked some garments and we left. During the car ride back to the hotel, my boss told me he would be needing the extra key to my room because I was going to be getting a roommate. I told him I would be happy to give the key to the roommate once they arrived, but his reasoning was that the roommate would be coming in late and should be able to get into the room without waking me at that time. Therefore, the key was necessary. I reluctantly gave it to him. A few hours later, after settling into my room, my boss texted me. He told me that the panties I had chosen were incredibly sexy and that he would love it if I modeled them for him. I replied with, Mr. I don't think the company would approve, nor would your wife or newborn child. I expected that to end his texts abruptly, but he was persistent, telling me that his wife and child were not my concern, the company didn't have to know, and that I would understand what a great opportunity this was later. He told me that when I grew up, I was 18, I would understand. At that point, I called the downstairs desk, cancelled my room keys, had new ones made, and asked that someone monitor my hall every few hours. They obliged once I explained the situation. I also texted my boss that if he didn't fly back to HQ in the morning, that I would and when I did, I would tell them everything. 
He left the next day. I now realize I should have reported him for sexual harassment, but I was young, uh, and didn't want any conflict. He was supposed to be a figure that I could trust, and he made it very clear that he was not to be trusted. TL. DR. Married boss made advancements during a business trip. I think you handled that well, for an 18 year especially. So what if you didn't tell HR, you didn't give in, took precautions to protect yourself and then got him to leave and stop. I remember playing at grandma's house in NYC, and hanging with some of the neighbor kids outside on her stoop. There was this kid named Kyle, and Kyle was black. My grandma yelled out the window that it was lunchtime, and I asked if Kyle could eat with us. She asked me which one was Kyle, and when I pointed to him, she screamed out the window. No jquack, no goddamn darky is stepping foot in my house. Run on home now little n. I was 8 9 ish. My dad was the only child in that house that grew up, and grew out of his hate. Why grandma why? If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.